Previously on Legit Streetcars, we resurrected a 1987 Mustang GT that had sat untouched and abandoned for 25 years. The goal was to get it started for the first time, so after a careful examination of the engine, some maintenance work, and some repair work that we did in the middle of a parking lot, we succeeded. The Mustang came to life with the starter still engaged. <laughs> that too and got her running well but not without some minor snags along the way so I'll leave that video linked down below if you haven't seen it yet. And in this video we're gonna get the Mustang GT driving for the first time and of course we have to take the ultimate Ford roadside assistance vehicle my 1000 horsepower turbo Trans Am. And this car is so utilitarian. I've owned it for about 20 years now and I've done just about everything with my Trans Am, including moving furniture, hauling babies, running nine second quarter miles. But today we have it loaded up with lots of tools, some fluids, some ramps and other Fox Body Mustang essentials. And I have the T-tops off, so today's gonna be a fun day. Lots of piece of this, doesn't he? I eat Mustangs for breakfast. Sounded really cool, I don't know. What's up, dude? Hey! You ready to drive your Mustang? I'm ready, let's do it. I had to bring a GM product to make sure this all went okay. So. <laughs> I kind of jinxed myself here with the GM comment because the Trans Am is not running well. It's got a slight misfire to it. It's hard to tell because it's got an aftermarket camshaft, so it's got a little lump. But I know this car very, very well. And as soon as we pulled out of the shop, I got into a little bit of boost. And I'm like, wait a minute, that, that's not right. It was kind of, it was breaking up basically. Again, if you're not super familiar with the setup, you'd think this is normal. It's got a little something going on here. I, I don't know. All right, that'll have to be for a future video. I am gonna be getting back into this car. We're gonna be doing a different turbo fuel system. So for all of you guys that have been asking me about my Turbo Trans Am, it's coming back to the channel, except now in the first video, we gotta figure out why it's misfiring. And right now we have to focus on this, our 1987 Mustang GT. So let's just kick this party off with another start of the engine, and then we have to take a good look at the cooling system. All right, so if you guys saw the last video, we have an ignition switch issue, so it's kind of a challenge to get this thing started. Let's see, you gotta hold the ignition switch in, the connector is loose, push the clutch in, obviously, and then hit the sweet spot there in the ignition. And she fires right up and runs beautifully. All right, it's blowing some more leaves out. All right, so we're gonna drive it up onto the ramp so we can get into the cooling system. And this is, driving it is a two-person job because Eli's gotta hold the connector on the ignition switch and then, you know, Peter's gotta go ahead and drive it. So this will technically be the first time we're putting it in gear and it's moving under its own power in 25 years. With a co-pilot. With a co-pilot. Yeah, co it, it requires two people, so. Are you in first? Uh, yes, sir. Is it going first okay? Clicks yeah, right in. clicks right in. All right, here we go. You did it. <laughs> up and up the yeah, you're good, man. We got to clean more leaves off the exhaust. Smells Looks like, like a campfire. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it does not look like it has any coolant left in it. And yeah, I don't hear any fluid moving around in there. So I think what we're going to do is, uh, drain the radiator, see what's left in the radiator. There's gotta be something in there. And we're gonna go ahead and replace this thermostat as well. We're also gonna check and replace the differential fluid and a few other things to make sure this guy is safe to drive. But just look at the condition. Look at that. Oh, and something interesting that we figured out since the last video is the mileage mystery. So Eli bought this Mustang with the assumption that it had 143,000 miles, but I was a little skeptical and a lot of people agreed with me in the comments. I think literally everybody that commented about the mileage agreed. I thought that this car had 43,000 miles because of a slew of evidence like 
the seat bolsters here, especially after 100,000 miles and this many years on these old Fords. This would be cracked up. This would be worn out, and aside from being dirty, the interior on this car is in excellent condition. So the steering wheel is in great shape. There's no cracks on the dash. If you look at the pedals, they're not worn out. So there's a lot of little indications that this could be a low mileage vehicle. None of the white lettering on the buttons are worn off. And that definitely happened on your typical 143,000 mile Fox body Mustang. Now, obviously the old clusters reset after 100,000 miles. So it does show 43,000 miles. Um, but basically we ran the Carfax and the last reported mileage was 57,000 miles back in 1991. And according to our research, this car has been sitting since about 96, 97. So it does look like this car was just driven a lot. And the previous owner told us that the owner before him was in the military. And he drove this from Florida to North Carolina to California many, many times while he was in the service. And so most all of these miles are just highway miles. And apparently he just took really good care of the car. And if you guys like to take care of your cars too, then you're going to love the new ceramic spray from Avalon King. Now I've been testing this for months on the Trans Am, my old Rolls Royce and a few other cars. And I'm happy to say this stuff is awesome. It's streak free and super hydrophobic. And after spraying it on my wife's twin turbo Mustang, I literally mixed up dirt and water in a bucket, dumped it on the car and let it sit. Most of the dirt rolls right off and the heavy clumps of dirt rinsed off immediately. Now the spray hasn't officially launched yet, but they've released a small batch only for my viewers. This is a very limited stock deal. And if you click on my link down below and use coupon code legit light, you're going to get a free six pack of the Avalon King all purpose microfibers. And the application is super easy. You literally just wipe it on and you're done. There's no dry time. You can put this on wet or dry. So you can use this as a quick detailer. It works really well for that. And it works well on cars that haven't been ceramic coated. So you're going to get about three months of protection with this. And it's going to add that deep glossy shine to your paint or if your car has been ceramic coated, it's gonna extend the life of it and again, give it that boost in shine. And I'm also gonna leave you another coupon code down below to get you $25 off the complete DIY ceramic coating kit. So for around like 70 bucks, you could ceramic coat your entire car and get the spray with the free microfibers. It's a crazy deal and it's going to run out. So definitely take advantage. Here's the drain for the coolant. Wow. It's really green and we do have some. Yeah, look at that. Super nice coolant. This is excellent. Wow. I wish the coolant on my 2002 SVT Lightning looked like this. I don't know if it had ever been changed and at 85,000 miles it looked like this. It was just all rust. Now, granted that thing did have a blown head gasket and then a cracked piston, but that is neither here nor there. Right now we have excellent, excellent looking coolant. It just probably wasn't that full. I still can't believe this thing isn't leaking oil from anywhere. I mean, this thing is in great shape. I've worked on a lot of abandoned vehicles that have been abandoned for far less time than this, and they were in a lot worse condition. All right, so let's take off our upper radiator hose. Oh yeah, these are very satisfying, rusty, kind of clicking noises. Come on, old clamp. Come on now. Nice. Dude, this is beautiful. Look at that. Green coolant, no crusty stuff. I love this car. All right. Hopefully this little hose is in good shape because I don't have one. I just got the thermostat and gasket. Now getting this clamp off would make life a lot easier since we have a bolt behind it. All right, somehow I got a wrench on this bolt. Oh, please don't snap. Oh, it's really... Should be done with the water pump out of the way. It's a pain. This bolt is going to take forever. Oh, so annoying. All right, so at least one of these bolts is kind of easy to get to. All right. Excellent condition. Getting that one bolt out easy does not change the fact that I still have to remove the second bolt that's in the Bermuda Triangle of 5.0 engines. 5.0 guys, tell me what I'm doing wrong in the comments. Come on now. I know there's like 50 million of you guys out there. They made a lot of these cars, 79 to 93. Is that the longest run for a single car generation? What about the Volkswagen Beetle? Eh, it doesn't count. That was, there was a lot of weird stuff going on with the Beetle. Current gen 4Runner. 
What year? 2009, 2010 to current. I can't do math, but I don't think that's as much well, as this. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. 5-0's got to beat. All right, comment down below. What is the longest single generation run of a car outside of the Beetle that they made literally forever in different countries for economic reasons and some other weird stuff going on? Yeah, I think in Mexico they were till 2007. Yeah, that, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. We need we need the hammer, but not, not yet. Not yet, Peter. I have faith that we can get this housing off now. Oh, I didn't even need the pry bar. Just need muscles. All right, let's get this housing off. Actually, we didn't even need to take the hose clamp off that little hose. If the parts store doesn't have that, I'm not taking it off. All right, they claim to have one of these at the parts store, so we got to do it. Okay, yeah, that's a little crusty. We go. Nothing too exciting with the thermostat. Come on, baby. Let's go. All right. So I am definitely glad we're replacing this hose. Yeah. Not in the best shape. What if they don't have a new one? Then sorry, Eli. We have You're to gonna go. owe me a new car, we man. To, we have to go now. <laughs> All right, so Peter's going to get a new hose for us. If we have to, we'll roll with bulk hose. Now let's get this gasket off. That I gotta say, newer engines that just have O-rings are so much easier to work with. Scraping paper gaskets off kind of stinks. Now this is the way to do it. We brought power tools out here in the middle of the parking lot. This pipe is brutal. This isn't cool. All right, so we got this pretty clean. Now I gotta just chip away at it, literally. All right, so now we have to peel off the gasket sticker cover. I haven't seen one of these in forever. And now we will stick our gasket onto our housing, our nice and clean housing, with our new thermostat. Look at this thing, it's like practically a new housing, right? So we got this at the parts store, but we had to make it shorter. So this isn't even an exact fit part, and it was $15. So if you guys need any more proof that inflation is real, Fox Body Mustang little coolant hoses are $15 now. Come on, I remember when these were three. All right, so we have our ridiculously expensive hose on here. So we're going back together. All right, so now we're going to tighten up this top bolt. Just a little. There we go. Our little Milwaukee Fuel 3.8s would probably snap this thing in half. I've been working on cars so long, we didn't even have electric ratchets or impacts. Back in my day, not that old. Am I, I'm 20 years older than you, that's so weird. Yeah, you are pretty old. That is you very You could be your weird. dad. I could, people have said that. All right, going back together with the upper radiator hose. We're almost done with you, cooling system. For now, for now. We'll see what, what breaks later. All right, of course, I forgot the funnel and it's kind of windy. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a big mess. Hey, what do you got there, Eli? Water. I got a razor blade from- No, 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 oh, I need this. No, no, no. Dude, come on. Fine. You can, you can still drink from this. Oh yeah, yeah. are you, are you gonna, just gonna turn it into a cup? Yeah, I'm, I'm literally transforming this into a cup, life hack. How to turn a water bottle into a cup. Here's Look your, what he did. Here's your chalice, sir. You know what's funny about this? It's really not that much bigger <laughs> than the actual opening here. <laughs> That's the worst funnel I've ever seen Dude, in my life. Dude, it's not bad though. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do this without this water bottle funnel. Oh, it feels so good replacing fluids on an old car, even though this coolant didn't look bad. It's new blood. We're giving it new blood. Wait, no, the oil, the oil's the blood. What is the coolant? In the world of like bodily fluids, what what can we compare the coolant to? Sweat? Bile. Water? Bile. It's bile. Bile? bile. Yeah. I was thinking sweat because you know sweat is something that makes oh, you cool and like that would make more sense than bile. This is a car Comments sweat. Comments in the section. In the comment. Oh <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> you failed, Peter. All right. So up next we have the ignition switch. We're having some major issues with the ignition switch here, and I wonder. I wonder if that's why this car was put away because it had a really weird, weird problem where you had to turn the key and it had to hit a specific spot and then you had to hold it there, but then the starter would stay engaged and that's because the ignition switch has got issues, lots of issues. All right, so I've already cut off a couple zip ties. It had zip ties holding it together, so it looked like this, but without the zip ties, 
it's coming apart. The connector should actually unplug from this white part. This should stay with the ignition switch. So let's pull it down and there you have it. And yeah, this isn't good. So this whole thing is just straight up broken. Wait a minute, technically this should... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this would be a really easy car to steal. You know, the tamper-proof torques that you can buy at literally any auto parts store and that every single tool manufacturer makes. Don't know why it's still called tamper-proof. But we're just gonna rig this up so we can replace it at the shop because I do have those tools there. I don't wanna have to re-buy them. So, we gotta put this back together, which, there we go, it goes like that. And we go like that. We gotta hold this in there, don't fall. Don't fall. There we go. And now we are gonna zip tie this thing. Like a true mechanic? Like a true, true mechanic, yep. All right, we have to get really fancy here with the zip ties. There we go. Let's see if that works. It might actually work. We could probably roll with this for a while. All right, let's see here. Oh yeah, look at that. We don't even need an ignition switch. Hey, is this my first time starting it? I think so, I yeah. think it is. How does it feel? It feels awesome. Do you feel like a Fox Buddy guy? Especially with the T-tops. I got T-tops on the Trans Am. I'm a big T-top fan. If I was going to buy a Fox Body, it'd pretty much be this one. The GT, I like the ground effects. I like the T-tops. I like the red interior, the manual trans. How, mu how much you want for this thing, Eli? Right now? $40,000. Oh, jeez. I shouldn't have never got it started. Ooh, we might have to check the power steering fluid. This? Look at this guy, he's so picky. It's his first drive and he's like, gotta get the lumbar just right. This clutch is stiff, dude. Remember you got an e-brake. Oh yeah, Your formula is an automatic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Simmer down there, Eli, simmer down. <laughs> How's it feel, man? It feels good, man. All right, good, good. Now Thanks for just, helping me. Let's see if Eli... I you trust me to do this. Let's see if you don't kill it. No pressure. Reverse lights work. It sounds so good. Oh! Okay, let. No, no, no. That's okay. Just uh, let off the brake. Let off the brake. Okay. There you go. Now stop. You're good. All right, we're gonna open up the fill plug on the differential and see what we got in here. And I could definitely tell this thing was not a Midwest car. Everything comes apart way too easy. All right, so I just want to check if there is some diff fluid, and there definitely is. Wow, and it looks really nice and clean. So we're good. We are good there. We might do a service when we get back to the shop, but I just want to make sure that it has some. I wasn't expecting it to come out. Usually these things are a little low. All right, so now we're checking the level of the transmission fluid. So this is a manual, so there's no dipstick, and we're gonna check it just like we checked the differential fluid by opening the fill plug. And if we see anything come out, we at least know it's at a good level. Yep, see that? I can already see, I don't wanna make a mess here, but we already got some coming out. It looks really nice and clean. Outside of the old spark plugs and the original wires, it's almost like they serviced everything and then just put this thing away. All right, so we're going to uh, fire it up, warm the engine up, make sure that it doesn't overheat, and then it's time to drive. It runs too good. It's just, it's too nice. Super quiet. Coolant is looking good. So yeah, we'll get it up to operating temperature and hopefully everything's okay. All right, so we gotta cruise this thing in style. So we're gonna take the T-tops off. No way, are these shocks kind of working? No, not really, not working at all. So the hatch on this thing is the one and only part of the car that's rusted and rusted badly. So this needs a whole new hatch if anyone knows of a GT hatch for sale in the Chicagoland area. Let us know. Eli is definitely buying. Let's see, what is in here? I haven't looked in the back yet. It's like all these old car companies knew what mice like to eat. Oh, there's a spider right there. This stuff is the worst. Ugh. What is in here? Oh man, this is nasty. What do we got in here? Ugh. Yeah, we definitely had rodents at some point back here. Uh, which is to be expected, but the good thing is is it's not all rotted out and rusted out. I mean, this looks very, very intact. Oh, and look at this. It's a manual fuel door release. Oh, I wish we had this in the last video. We had to, like, kind of pry this thing apart. Uh, it works still. Nice. All right, well, anyway, let's put this away for now. We'll save that for 
a future detail video. And we got the original T-top bag, sweet. Some extra belts as well. You just have locked T-tops? Yeah. That is so cool. Uh, you guys hear that crackling here in the blower motor? Oh yeah, that is literal mouse poo. There were mice in here. They didn't chew apart too much though, but there's definitely, definitely signs of mice. And look at this old Kenwood part. Open. Oh, let's get some fuses. Radio yeah, does the Kenwood radio? Hey, lights up. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Uh, look, and it changes stations. I don't hear anything though. Yeah, radio doesn't work unfortunately. I mean, it turns on and off. We're just not getting any audio. Wait a minute. What if one of these fuses is just blown? Nope, they look good. All right, radio's for another day. Yes. You can lock the T-tops from the factory on this car. That is so cool. Oh, wait a minute, I can lock mine too. I have never done that before. I've never actually even thought about it. Look at that. A key has never gone near my T-tops. Oh man, I can't wait to pressure wash this car. I mean, it's literally alive right now. And the paint is definitely faded. I think we're gonna see a big improvement by buffing this car out. Uh, but there is some clear coat failure for sure. I wonder if this thing has been painted before, at least once in its lifetime. But uh, yeah, we have a fender we have to paint. It's got a black spot and a new hatch to replace, so we might be doing a little bit of minor paint work. So we'll just kind of see what we can do to resurrect it. Well, we've had this thing running for like 20, 30 minutes now. Heat is coming out nice and hot. It's not overheating. Uh, the level is okay. Everything's good, but it's running very, very cool. So it could be a gauge issue. I'm gonna assume it's probably a gauge issue. We have a brand new thermostat in there. Hey, I wonder if the windows work. Let's see. Oh, no way. yes. No way. Does the other one work? Oh, no. 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 Oh, oh, is it just that switch? Okay. Now let's, let's not push it, let's not push it. Let's, we're, we're lucky enough lock, with lock this one. Wow. All right, give it some love, give it some love. <laughs> Dude, it runs yeah. so good. This you guys awesome, oh. man. <laughs> Let's go for a ride. Let's do it. All right, you're gonna have to open up for me though. Go. Yeah, got some issues there. And we could turn this off, but I mean, this would be crazy. Let's just see. Does this have working air conditioning? That I doubt it. It's warm and kind of nasty. Let's just turn that off. So wait, have you ever owned a stick shift car? No, I just learned how to drive stick. You just learned how to drive on what? Corvettes, Camaros. Oh, working at the dealer? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. This should be easy then, I think, right? Fox Fox are easy to drive. Now you got like about 215 horsepower here, Eli, so simmer. That's simmer a lot, down. man. Yeah. I know. First drive. It's a little low on power steering fluid. I don't have any right now. We'll fill it up at the shop. We still have to do the brakes and everything. By the way, we gotta do the brakes. So be yeah. very gentle. Let's test these brakes out right now in the parking lot, by the way. We're gonna bring it back to the shop. We still have a bunch of work to do to it. <laughs> the brakes work good though. They just look a little rusted to me, but they don't seem to be sticking at all. And it's clean. It runs so good. Oh, it's starting to rain. Oh, no way. It's starting to rain. We got the T-tops off. No. Are you, all right, whatever. Just go around the block. Hopefully Peter's putting my T-tops back on. Go, go, go before it starts storming. You gotta get a nice drive in, it's your first time. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, let's not go full throttle yet. Let's make sure it shifts and wheels don't fall off. Feels good though, right? Yeah, it feels really good. Wow, this transmission makes no noise whatsoever. No howling noises from the rear end. This thing is sweet, man. We should probably get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, visibility's getting getting bad with all the mold on the glass. Wow, it handles good. It really doesn't even have many creaks and rattles, which is crazy. I mean, we have the T-tops off, but I mean, the suspension and everything is rock solid. It even drives straight, doesn't it? It does. Dude, this is a nice car. Like, I really thought it had 43,000 miles. Oh, oh, he killed it. He killed it. Oh, don't, don't get that on film. I'm keeping it in, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> now you've officially christened your Mustang. You gotta kill the engine at least once. It's probably like, what, 0.001% of 18 year olds in the United States know how to drive a manual, so you are a very rare person. Yes, it's so perfect. All right, it's really starting to come down. 
Luckily, the Trans Am has ice cold air conditioning. So we're gonna get the car to the shop. I probably won't film any of it though because we gotta concentrate. Eli just drove away into the distance, but uh, let's get it back to legit street quarters. All right guys, it is the next day and it's not raining outside. So we're gonna do some more work to the Mustang and then I'm going to drive this through the forest preserve and kind of see what it feels like after we've done the brakes and a couple of other things. But while we have it on the rack, I just wanna give you guys a good look at the condition of this car. So you can see the floors are in excellent condition. The lines, nothing is rusted. So this is kind of new for me. We won't have to do brake lines, most likely. It drove here just fine. Now the brakes are pretty rusted up, but they worked okay. And most importantly, we didn't have any lines that blew up. We've definitely had that on the channel. But yeah, outside of some Flowmaster mufflers, this car is completely stock down to the factory catalytic converters and all of the emission systems. Uh, here is the Borg Warner T5 five-speed manual transmission. And it's a little bit dirty, but nothing seems to really be leaking on this car. There are a lot of leaves that we definitely need to clean up, but overall, structurally, everything looks great. This lower radiator support is in excellent condition. It doesn't look like this car has been wrecked at all either. Everything just looks really nice and factory. All right, so now that we're at home base here, let's do our ignition switch. So this is gonna fall apart, there we go. And I think this job would be a lot easier if we can get the trim around the cluster moved up a little bit. So I found a couple screws for that. So I got this screw out, another one on that side, and this should pull up. Yes, that'll give us a ton more room to get to those screws. And it looks like there were rodents in the dash. Excellent. They brought this all from the trunk, those pesky little critters. Found a couple other screws in there, so I removed those. And now we should really be able to get this out of the way. All right, there we go. And we'll be able to vacuum some more. But that should be good. Good enough to get to these guys. All right, now don't tell anybody, but I have tamper-proof Torx sockets. Don't tell anybody. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and use my totally standard Torx socket to get these totally normal, non-security bolts out. That's what I'm doing. All right, but you guys know that I'm using the tamper-proof torque socket. Gotta keep it on the DL though. I don't want the feds coming after me. Look at the new improved switch. Has this little holder here for the connector. That's kind of cool. Anywho, we're just gonna tighten this bad boy up and we'll just plug in our new ignition switch and use this little holding device just like so. All right, let's see if this thing works. It does, it works. Perfect. We gotta push this button in here to get the key out. All right. Put this all back together, probably do a little bit more vacuum cleaning and, and we're good. All right, so we found the wheel lock in the car, which is really nice. Ah, this is dangerous. This cable is attached to the wheel lock, so this turns into a weapon. Look at that, it's a weed whacker. Hey, maybe it'll break free some of the literal mold on the tires. All right, let's hope this wheel comes off without a fight. Don't fight me, wheel. Aha. Ugh, I win, Mustang. Ew. Ew. Wow, this is like a lot of different animals have lived and died in here. I mean, mostly spiders have lived in here and killed everything. Wow, look at this. It's like an alien planet. How much, guys? How much to eat this? Will this alien planet easily come off? Oh my gosh. This planet is easily coming. How are these drums not like, gosh. I love cars that aren't from rust belts. Is this seriously what you guys are dealing with out in the desert and the south and everything? All right, guys, we're gonna set up my Exacto funnel vacuum. I just made that up. It's just a regular funnel. But check this out. It will concentrate the vacuum. And we will destroy this alien planet. Aha! Now the parking brake worked really well on this car. So I don't really think we need to do much. The shoes are in excellent condition, so we're just gonna clean everything up. I've already given it a good inspection. The wheel cylinder right here is not leaking any fluid, so we're gonna be golden here. All right, we'll clean up this drum a wee bit. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna go right back together here with the drum, and let's move to the front. All right, so this has a little bit of play, and that's probably just in the wheel bearing. We'll see if we can address that. When we do the brakes, it spins really nice though. Like nothing was stuck or anything during the drive. It won't stop spinning. It spins very, very nice. Now we must turn on the tire whacker. Really got to stand back with this thing. 
dangerous. We could easily cut it off, but then it would be no fun. This wheel is coming off like butter. Like butter. There we go. Ooh, we got a nice alien planet in here. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, I just cleaned my shop floor, so we have the garbage can right here ready to catch everything and anything. Oh man. Look at this. What lived in here? I gotta say, if I was some kind of rodent and needed to live in a car, I'd live in a fox body. That'd be cool. I wonder if the animals that live in cool cars are, are just generally known as cooler animals. You know? It's like their car. They're animal car enthusiasts. All right, so we gotta pop the bearing cap off first. This isn't gonna be like a lot of the brake jobs you guys are used to me doing on the channel. This is some old school stuff right here. So with this setup, the outer race of the wheel bearing is the brake disc. So we have to take apart the front wheel bearings in order to do a brake job. Uh, well, at least if you're changing out the rotors, you do. And so we'll be able to make an adjustment um, or just straight up replace the front wheel bearings. So we'll kind of see where we go with that as soon as we get this apart. If I could ever get this cotter pin to remove itself. There we go. All right, I know we'll remove this outer shell right here. Grease looks really good. A lot of times when the bearings go bad, the grease turns to black because it gets little pieces of metal in there. So this is kind of loose, so sometimes the socket is just enough. Yeah, look at that, to take the nut off. This wasn't loose enough really to be dangerous or anything yet, and the cotter pin would stop it really from going too far. But adjusting wheel bearings, it's just kind of one of those experience things really, but it's, it's pretty easy. I'll show you. There we go. Oh, this is horrible. Yeah, so don't don't drop stuff in your your disgusting animal fruit salad. Where are you? It's uh, covered in grease, so this it's is so gross. Also covered in. <laughs> we found it. It's a little gross, but we found it. All right, no big deal. There you go. Good as new. Don't you know? Okay. Oh, we have the bearing. And this bearing looks to be in really nice shape. We have a Timpkin made in the USA. All right, so we wanna see. So yeah, there's really no sense in replacing this, especially if you're gonna to go to the auto parts store and get a cheap one. This is a great bearing. All right, let's see what happens here. There we go, we just need level three on the old Milwaukee fuel. I'm getting really, really kind of cocky here just going at it with power tools. Normally I break everything free by hand, but just everything comes apart so nicely on this Mustang. Getting too confident here, people. All right, there we go. I gotta say these brakes overall are in pretty good condition. Like these really don't need to be done. Look at the brake pad, ton of life left. And here's our rotor and it's not even really pitted. I think had we driven this more than, you know, 20, 30 miles or whatever yesterday, this would have cleaned up. But nonetheless, it's a good thing. Just, you know, fresh brakes in the front. We're doing so many other things that will just kind of give this Mustang a fighting chance to be a very reliable daily driver. That's pretty much what Eli's gonna do with it outside of the winter. All right, so what we're gonna do here is pop the seal out, the inner seal, just like that. And then on these, we can just pop the bearing all the way out. And this grease looks really nice, but we're gonna clean it up anyway and just repack it. All right, at this point, we're just gonna use a little bit of brake clean and we're just gonna clean all of the grease out. And if you have shop air, that helps a lot too to push the rest of the grease out. You see a lot of it'll just end up in the rag. Now, it's not super important to get every last speck of this out. If the bearing's in good shape and the grease looks pretty good, you're probably gonna be okay. All right, so now we gotta go back together with our cleaned out bearings. So we're using a fully synthetic wheel bearing grease. And there's quite a bit in the old one, so I like to kind of pre-pack it first. Then we're gonna take a little bit of grease, put it in our palm, and we're just gonna scoop it up like this. And basically, you know you're done when the grease starts to come out the other side. See those little lines shooting out? So definitely wear some gloves for this. But we're scooping up the grease right from our palm. Now they do sell a tool that will push all this grease into the bearing as well. You can definitely buy one. I'll find one online and link it down below. It's probably only, I don't know, 10 or $15, but if you don't wanna spend anything, you can just use your hand, just wear some gloves. All right, so at this point, we can go ahead and reinstall our freshly greased bearing. 
There you go. All right, so now we're just going to clean this up prior to our seal installation. And this is a brand new seal. You definitely do not want to reuse the old one. Now there are seal driver tools that you can get, and I actually have them at the other end of the shop, but I'm too lazy to walk. And I want to show you guys a little trick. You can take the old seal and just use that as a tool. Just make sure you're going all the way around. You can almost kind of hear it when it's bottomed out. And that's it. That's the hard part of doing a brake job like this. Pretty easy, actually. All right, so before we go back together, we just want to clean up the spindle a little bit, get all of your spider webs out of the way. And clean this up really nice. Get all this old grease off of there. And in some cases, if people let their wheel bearings go, if they're loose for too long, they will chew up the spindle and then you have to get a whole new one. There's not much you can do about that. Now we'll throw a little bit of grease here on our spindle as well, just like that. And we're just gonna slide the rotor back on. All right, now we have our freshly greased outer bearing. Go ahead and install that. Make sure everything spins okay. Then we'll go back together with the washer that fell into the garbage can and then just thread the nut on. So then I like to kind of tighten this while I'm spinning it. You don't want to go too tight, otherwise it'll slow the rotor down and you're putting unnecessary force on the bearing. It's gonna wear it out. It's gonna cause drag as well, lots of bad things. And so right now I've tightened it all the way by hand and watch, if we go back just a little bit, you can see that's too loose. And there are torque specs for these as well. But in my experience, you just get it to about hand tight, spinning it just enough to get all the play out. Look at that, there's absolutely no play in this bearing now. And once I tighten it all the way by hand, you can just give it a tiny little turn like that. I don't know, maybe about an eighth turn or so. Everything spins really nice and free. We don't have any play in the rotor at all. And that's it. Then we just go back together with our locking cap. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and replace the cotter pin. So just match it up. I bought this set for about like seven to 10 bucks, very cheap. And we're just gonna go ahead and stick that on through the hole. And then just take your side cutters and bend it around like that so it won't go anywhere. All right, so now we just need to compress the piston. This is a really nice tool to use for that. And there's different cups to fit different size pistons. So you just want one that'll go over the piston. And we just tighten it up like that. And this piston is going in really nice and easy. It's a good sign. A lot of times with these older cars, the brake fluid absorbs a lot of moisture and that moisture causes corrosion in the piston inside of here and it gets stuck. So the piston and the cylinder get frozen together and then you have a sticking caliper. But that is not the case with our Fox body. This is excellent. Yeah, because we called some stores just to get prepared for this and no one has these brake calipers in stock. They were at least a day out, which I kind of found to be a little odd. They had all the wheel bearings. We bought all the wheel bearings and seals, stuff like that, just in case. The wheel bearings were like 20 bucks each, like 20 bucks inner, like 25 outer, something like that. And so that, yeah, another reason not to replace them if they're Timkins or good USA made or, or the Japanese ones. What are the Japanese ones, Peter? NTN. NTN, yes, those are good too. So anyway, um, yeah, with that, now we're back in kind of normal brake job mode. We just slide our pads in, bolt the caliper back up and we're done. Uh, lubricate our pads a little bit. All right, I'll slide our caliper right back on. Last part of the job is cleaning up the pins and we're gonna put them in a drill. Look at this. Now that is efficiency right there. When you're in a hurry to clean your pins, look at that. Very nice. All right, so sometimes the caliper bolts have Loctite. You can see some of the blue Loctite from the factory. So we'll add just a little bit to the threads and then we're just gonna lubricate this part. So don't have this on the threads. You just want this part to slide this to thread in and then we can go back together like so. Now we'll tighten these guys up by hand and that is it. That is one complete side of a Fox body brake job, except we didn't really replace anything in the rear, which you rarely do with drums. They last a very long time, but uh, that's how you properly do the brakes in the front. And at this point, we gotta do the other side and a brake fluid flush. All right, so you always start with the brake caliper or the wheel cylinder that's furthest away from the master cylinder. So we've already bled out the other three and we have gotten very, very lucky. So we're on the last one 
Sprayed everything with penetrating oil. Yes. Yes, look at how easy. This is so great. Oh man. All right, we got lucky. And here comes the brake fluid. And for being so old, it doesn't look that bad, but you definitely want to replace it. This has probably absorbed a ton of moisture over the years. And you can gravity bleed it if you want, but I really want to drive this car. So we're going to speed things up and suck this brake fluid out. All right, next up, we're just going to fill this up with our synthetic AMSOIL brake fluid. And I'm going to save the cleaning of this reservoir for a future engine detailing video. We're going to go pretty far with this one and make this just look brand new. So we're going to be replacing kind of all this nasty stuff like this that's deteriorated away. And we're going to see what we can do with this intake and just seriously try and make it brand new. I'm, I'm super excited for that one. All right, so even though the diff fluid looks pretty good on this car, I am going to swap it out for some better diff fluid. Now, instead of taking the rear cover off to drain the differential fluid, which is stupid, they should have a drain on there. We are going to suck it out with one of these. This is like a $12 multi-use transfer pump. So right now I have the suction end inside of the diff. I fed it in, so it's somewhere in there. And now, let's see if I can do this so I can show you guys. There we go. We're simply going to pump the fluid out, just like that. So that's gonna save you a ton of time. You don't have to mess around with cleaning the diff cover and then resealing it and then potential leaks. If it's not leaking at all, don't mess with it if you just need to do a diff service. Do this. And just like everything I use in all of my videos, don't worry, it'll be linked down below even if I don't say that. So I'll put this pump down there uh, and pretty much everything else you see. Oh yeah, this is coming out. Ooh, we're almost done. There we go. And you can get this stuff from Amsoil in the normal quartz or these awesome squeeze containers. So you can literally just squeeze this all in there. All right, so this diff was actually overfilled. So we just fill it up until it just barely starts coming out and then we can cap it off. All right, so we're gonna finish this fluid party off with the transmission fluid. So I always like to open up the fill first. We already did this obviously, but yeah, this stuff looks so good. Probably doesn't need to be done, but we are gonna hook Eli up with some fresh Trans fluid as well. Please don't spill all over my floor. Okay, I'm gonna guide you into my drain. Okay, all right. Yep, Ford wants this to pour all over the exhaust. We got you figured out, Ford. We know how this works. You just wanna destroy shop floors. That's pretty much it, isn't it? Oh, this fluid is nice. Why am I doing this? So again, we're using some AMS oil synthetic. Uh, this does say automatic transmission fluid, but that is what it calls for. Uh, for this manual gearbox, and that's pretty common on a lot of vehicles. So a lot of these will call for Dextron 3 and whatnot, and this is just an improvement upon that. And we're gonna use the squeeze pouch again, make this really easy on ourselves. And just like the differential, as soon as the fluid starts to come out, you're good. So we'll just plug her up and then just tighten this by hand. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a transmission service on the Borg Warner T5. All right, last but not least for this mechanical refresh, we have new blue spark plug wires because the ones on here say 1987 on them and are the original wires. So you can see here the wires are in pretty bad shape. The insulation is coming apart. Ends can cause arcing. All right, so let's go ahead and pull these plug wires out. And we'll do these one at a time, but they are labeled, so we don't have to. All right, now what's cool is these new ones are labeled as well. So here's number eight, and we're hoping that it is roughly the same size. And it is. These aftermarket ones are gonna be slightly different, but that'll work. Yeah, look at these. These things are shot. Now we already replaced the spark plugs in the last video. We also did the oil change as well. We'll add a little bit of dielectric grease here. And we'll snap it in. Peter, I'm pretty much done. What, what's going on over here? You gave me the hard side. That's what's going on over here. That's, that's not that hard. They're equally as hard. There's nothing in the way over there. I have intake. I got power steering lines. I got coolant lines. I got everything over here. Rubbish. Excuses. All right, we got our new blue spark plug wires on. Personally, I would have gone with the factory gray. I think that would just look kind of clean. But it's Eli's car. We got to do what Eli wants. Peter. You got one T-top off. You ready to fire this thing up? Yes, sir. All right. 
Yeah. And we checked out the cap and rotor in the last video. It looks to be in really good shape. So no real reason to replace that. It runs so smooth. Peter, it's too bad because of the copyright protections that we can't rock out to some Def Leppard Bon Jovi right now. There's no royalty free Def Leppard? No, 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 they want their money. Yeah, they're gonna get their money. Pour some sugar on me in the name of love. There we go. They can't catch us for that. Peter, I know you're into like Japanese cars, but come on, dude. You could rock a 5.0. I do love it. <laughs> adjust my mirror. Look at the mold showing on the mirror. It's right here, look at it, it's growing. All right, we just got done taking some pictures at the forest preserve. And so this is my first drive. I just drove normally here just to warm the engine up. So, so far it's good. Like the engine runs great. The transmission is buttery smooth. It drives straight. It's overall just a really, really nice car, but it's dry today. So, I get to do a little of this. I'm in second. Oh, wow. I literally can't even give it any throttle. I'm, I'm hitting the gas right now and I'm not going anywhere at all. Oh, 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 this is bad. If you drive like under 2,500 RPM, it's fine. But if you give it any throttle at, yeah, look at that, nothing. It literally just cuts out. And this feels very fuel related. Now we did do the fuel pump in the last video, but the fuel tank was pretty dirty. Uh, I would imagine it's clogged up already so quickly. Yeah, this feels very fuel related. Let's see, I'll put it in the third. Oh yeah, and it's, it, it, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's kind of popping and backfiring and stuff. This feels very, it feels just like a fuel cut. Just like if they use the fuel cut to limit top speed, that's exactly what it feels like. So yeah, we're gonna have to look into that a little bit, but other than that, this is too cool. Driving an 80s Fox body. I mean, it's 2022, I'm almost 38 years old. So I, when I was in high school, these were, you know, like 10 years old, 10, well, 10 to like 20 years old because the model year was just so long. Um, so they were kind of an old car back then, but they were a very affordable car for my generation. So you could pick these up for like three grand back then when they were like normal cars with like, you know, 70,000 miles on them or whatever. And although they were pretty underpowered from the factory at 215 horsepower for the time, they ran pretty darn well. Oh, and I wish I could show you right now. I just want to rip into it, but this thing is cutting out. Nowadays, if you want to find a stock Fox body under 100,000 miles, like a clean example with good paint and everything, you're looking at about $15,000 for that car. So they've gone up quite a bit in value. They're definitely a collectible and it's one of the most popular, if not the most popular generation Mustang ever made. And I gotta say, I am just dying to rip into this right now. I know it's not that fast of a car, but they sound good. It just feels good. It's so retro in here. It's like going back in time. Whoa, come on, baby. Don't leave me stranded. Oh no. Oh, this isn't good, guys. Oh, yeah, someone's honking at me. Yes, thank you. You see the Fox body, the condition of it? Okay, it's clearing up. All right, guys, anyway, I think I'm gonna end the video right here. Um, if I end up breaking down, I'll post it up at Legit Street Cars on Instagram and Facebook. Follow me there if you haven't been already. Oh, Jesus. Okay, we're only going like 20 now. This is bad. But the uh, next video on the Fox body is actually going to be a detailing video, a first wash video. We're gonna blast off all this mold and crud. We're gonna be buffing it out. We're gonna see how nice we can make the exterior. And the reason I'm doing that video next is because uh, I'm going to a car show and Eli wanted to bring the Mustang with too, so he entered the Mustang into the show. Now, I would think we could just putt around with it and just knock over 2,500 RPM, which I don't know, maybe I'll have to diagnose and fix that before the car show, but it's in a few days. So anyway, the next video you guys see will be on us cleaning this and uh, maybe I'll include what the fix is for this. Maybe not, I really don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna get back. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. God, this thing is literally gonna die. <laughs> Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. Come on, baby, come on. All right, and stay tuned to the next video to see if I made it and to see this thing all cleaned up, I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, Jesus. Okay.